Hey everybody, it's uh, February 13th at 12.05 a.m. And I want to talk about FXN, which is an energy ETF. And on uh, Friday, at the close, just after the close, I guess within about an 11 minute span here, we got five very large trades, including the largest in its entire history. And uh, it's been trading since 2007. So 15 plus years of trades and the largest ever arrived. And that caught my attention. And not only did that arrive, but the fourth largest trade arrived. And then three other ones here that are in the top 50. So at the end of the day, Friday, we saw some enormous volume. So of course, uh, I wanted to check it out. And that's kind of the main purpose of this tool is to tell you where to look. So when these trades roll in, um, if you see something that's unusually large, that is your signal to go and check it out rather than having to monitor dozens or hundreds of charts at the same time hunting for setups. This will tell you where setups might exist. So uh, anytime we see a, a number one trade, I always check it out. And to be honest with you, I hadn't heard of this ETF prior to Friday. So, um, so I've learned a little bit about it since then. So anyway, the first thing I did is I, I clicked this link here uh, to pull up this chart. This shows its entire history going back to 07 and the top three trades. And um, what jumps out at me as is that this has been on quite a tear for the last three or so years since the uh, COVID low. And uh, whenever I see a number one ranked trade uh, at a relative high or near a relative high, immediately I start thinking that that is institutions closing out long positions, um, anticipating a reversal in the near future. Now, when that may come or if that may come remains to be seen. But there is a pattern that exists that um, suggests that this this particular ETF is, has reached the end of the line or is very, very close to it. And um, the corollary to that, of course, is that uh, energy may also have reached the end of its run here after three or so years. But let's look at it further. So I see this first and immediately I think, okay, well, maybe we've got some kind of topping uh, process in motion here. And then I look at it again. <clears throat> this is just from the... Uh, the low in March of 2020, and you can see it's it's a uh, kind of it's it's been consistently rising ever since. But anyone who follows energy can can tell that even without looking at this chart. But what I see is that up here we have the number three and the number six, and this was back almost a year ago. This was in uh, late 2020, or excuse me, early 2022, March of 22 and April of 22. So we have. Uh, number three, number six, and number 25 here, and then we have number 15. So four very large trades right here at the end of this particular wave. We get a little spike up, and um, and for the last year or so, it hasn't really materially advanced from here. So these came in at 1533. A year later, we're at 1725. I guess that's a little bit better, but it's not advancing at the pace that it had been advancing when it was down here in the $3 zone. So for the first two years, it went from $3 to $15, and then in the last year, it just went from $15 to $17.25, give or take. But I see a lot of volume up here in this profile suggesting to me that um, they may be distributing in this range. So we have the number one here and the number four here. We, down here, we have 3, 6, 15, and 25. So an awful lot of volume up here in this zone. Um, but with emphasis on the one that came in on Friday, it was 40 million shares. Um, the number two, or excuse me, the number three um, was 34 million. So it was 6 million more than that. It's, it's by a good stretch, the largest trade. Um, and again, not to repeat myself, but this to me really stands out. So then I want to look at even closer. This is just um, Friday only. So it went from 1670 to 1720, and then we get those really big trades right at the close, right at the high. Um, kind of just reinforcing what we've seen here. It's been on the rise, and we get a big trade at the end of it. Um, and this is just another view of the longer term chart, just to show 
a pattern that I've, I've demonstrated many times over across many tickers, which is that the largest trades tend to come at highs and lows, tops and bottoms. So you had a couple here at this relative high and a couple here at this relative low, and it chopped for, gosh, three years or so, and then it descended into the COVID lows, and then we see two really big trades here near the lows, and now we see a bunch of trades up here, which to me suggests that we reached some kind of high. And then we also see that there's this area between 15 and 17 has been uh, busy. There's a lot of a lot of time spent in here, so that suggests to me that it would be difficult to break out of this resistance area, um, but we'll see. So what do you do with this information? Well, what you don't do is just run out and short it right away because the length of time that this thing has been running, you know, three or so years, suggests that there is a lot of inventory to unload and that that, that will take some time. So if this was a big trade after an intraday move, um, that would be one thing, but my hunch is that these are institutional longs being closed. There may or may not be more behind it, um, but the takeaway for me is that if I was long, and I'm not, uh, but if I was long, I would want to consider protecting them or closing them or hedging them or doing something because the probabilities suggest that it's not going to continue up from here. Institutions don't put this much inventory uh, at, a, at a relative high. They put it down here at a relative low. Here they were selling into strength, and I think they're doing some more selling now. So it would be a surprise, to say the least, if they were putting more inventory than they've ever put in the history of this ticker right here now after three years of, of near constant rallying. That would be... A, it's not impossible, but that's a very low probability, in my opinion. So, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's difficult to know how long this will take to resolve. And by comparison, I wanted to look at ENPH, which did something similar. Back in November, we saw the second and third largest trade come in here. And um, I was sure that was it. They were, they were unloading. <clears throat> and they did. I mean, you can see price eventually declined. Um, this, these were sells, uh, but what they had to do was a lot more work. So these two trades here, the number two and three, are right here. And it took a month between the time this arrived, these two arrived, and November 18th, until that decline really started to take shape. Um, December 15th, 16th, before it finally broke down. So they had a little bit of distribution here, they brought it down, they brought it back up, and then they had these two big ones here, and then a bunch more. And this is just showing 10 or so trades, I think. Yeah, this is just showing 10 trades. Uh, there was a lot more. Um, and you can see these four navy lines here showing these four large institutional clusters that had been um, uh, building in size for uh, for as long as they were up here distributing. But ultimately, price did resolve lower. It took a month, and ENPH had been on quite a run as well. Um, but it just reinforces the point that I think this is nearing the end, but I can't say that this is the best time to, um, to necessarily look lower. They, they might have more... Uh, I think it's reasonably probable that they have more to, to unwind here, um, but that ultimately, eventually, uh, it does suggest to me that the energy trade that had been so bullish for the last three years may be coming to an end. Um, looking at it a little bit further, these are the holdings for uh, FXN. These are the top, I don't know, it's, I think it's all of them actually, but I, I put the top 25 in. Um, just to see what any of those individual tickers had been doing. So I typed the, the 25 largest components of this ETF in, and I looked for just what might be overbought. And it came back with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And these are pretty solid names, XOM and EOG and um, MVC. So there are, and actually XOM came in twice. So there's six tickers. Um, and uh, all of them are overbought on this is in the hourly though so this is not at the daily level or the weekly level this is these are shorter term overbought readings but they um they corroborate to some extent the the um 
the thesis that FXN is uh, reaching or at a high. Um, likewise, when I did the same test looking for anything that was oversold, nothing came back. So nothing's oversold up here. Everything's overbought. Um, and if we just look at all of them together, we can see that some of them have had some large trades. Um, oh, that's interesting. I just uncovered a bug. I gotta look at that. Okay, so um, here's all the tickers that are. Um, oh no, that's not a bug. Those are overbought or oversold. So this is showing anything. So uh, anyway, um, some of these, despite not being overbought or oversold, are still uh, have still printed relatively large trades on Friday. So we've got a number. These are in the top 172, 57, 75, 67. So a smattering of um, large trades which if we were to dig in even deeper on these, we are likely to see that they're at relative highs. So let's see what PDC looks like. I actually haven't looked at this one yet. Yeah, it went up $4, 6.5%. Uh, no surprise it's overbought. So at least on, on lower time frames. So anyway, um, I would encourage everyone who's interested in following up on this to research it and corroborate this trade data with whatever methodology you may be using to um, identify trade setups. Um, the, this tool is best to use as a complement to other forms of technical analysis. So if you have, uh, if you're an Elliott Wave guy or if you uh, do supply and demand zones or you have some other uh, basis for identifying pivots, then um, uh, when you can find institutional trades that are disproportionately large that fit with your patterns and your theses, that gives you additional confidence to enter or exit a trade. And again, these are just as good, if not better, for exit signals as they are for entry signals. So anyway, that's it. Um, we've got, just to review, we've got five very large trades on Friday. We've got a pattern that suggests they're coming in at a high. We can see this on multiple time frames. <clears throat> We've got um, patterns in similar stocks that uh, um, suggest that when these trades arrive, that um, the end is close. Now, whether that's tomorrow or a week or a month, it remains to be seen. But the takeaway is, again, that uh, distribution is in progress and that we should expect at some point for price to resolve lower, um, as ENPH did here. Lots of distribution a dip, came back up, they had more to sell, and they really, really unloaded a ton, and now we're in the midst of a more <clears throat> um, reasonable decline that is commensurate with the amount of distribution that we saw up here. Um, so that's it. Uh, you can always look at these individual tickers more closely. Uh, perhaps one or more of them might have uh, even better setups or corroborate this. Um, but that's it. Um, thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later. If you have any questions, send me an email. There's a link down here, or you can find me on Twitter. Send me a DM. Um, this uh, video is going to be up on the uh, YouTube channel, uh, along with the others. So please subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. Thanks. Bye.